month, your girl read 20 books. That's never happening again. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? <sighs> Hi guys, I'm Monica and welcome back. Ugh. Hi guys, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. And yes, I did it again. I read 20 books this freaking month. I just, I don't know how these things happen, okay? I was actually in a reading slump for a week and a half this month. But you know what? I, <laughs> I read a lot of novellas. So I think that that's why you see me read so many books. I'm just a liar, basically. We don't have a lot of time. I mean, we do have a lot of time, but I have 20 books to talk about. So we're gonna get right to it. The first book that I read this month is The Monsters We Deserve by Marcus Detchwig. This book is about a man who's writing a book and who hates Frankenstein. <laughs> I can, I can emphasize with this man because it's, you know, I really don't like Frankenstein. I know, I know, I'm a horrible human, but you know, that's how it is. This book is weird and creepy and crazy and I gave it five fucking stars, ladies and gentlemen and others, because I fucking loved it. It's, I don't even know how to explain this book. So basically, this is kind of like, imagine that book, uh, Christmas Carol, where you get visited by the ghosts of the past, but the ghosts of the past are actually Mary Shelley. <laughs> Mary Shelley young, Mary Shelley old, and, 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 and the monster. And well, this book discusses, <laughs> how do I follow that up? This book discusses what it's like to write a book and to have the book's identity be so tied to yours and what how writing a book is not like this pleasurable, wonderful experience where you sit down with a cup of black coffee to your typewriter, looking out into the mountains and think, Oh, I'm just so lucky to be writing. No, this guy hates writing. <laughs> At least, like, the character. I really loved it. I, I, I love weird, creepy shit like this. And honestly, the moment he was like, I hate Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, I was like, oh, me too, and nobody gets it. Her writing is beautiful and everything. But if you haven't seen me rant about that, that book, I'll link it up in the cards so that you can see why I don't like it. So, yeah. Let's get, let's move, let's move it along, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a lot of books to cover. All right, what did I read next? Next, I read Withering Heights by Emily Bronte. And this was another five out of five stars. Now, let me make one thing clear. This book is not romantic. And um, if you think this book is romantic, baby, are you okay? Like, I'm not judging. I'm not judging. You know I don't judge on this channel. This is the channel where we don't judge people for what they like. But I would talk to someone if you think that you want a romance, like any of the romances in this book. This book basically is the story of a bunch of horrible people that make the worst decisions possible and then hurt each other and hurt each other's children because they hurt each other. That's the best synopsis you're gonna get out of this. What I liked about this book is I like books with like fucked up people in it and I like books that are like eh, problematic in the romance aspect but that the book itself tells you that it's problematic. Like I don't think Emily Bronte was like yes this is the romance for the ages. I think she was trying to tell us something else. I really enjoyed it because I love how fucked up everybody is in this book and I love legacy romances like I love the idea of Oh, my son and your daughter met and we were in love in the past, but we never got together and maybe they'll get together and stuff like that. I eat that shit up, so I liked it. I gave it five out of five stars. But again, I don't endorse the romance in this book. It's no. Mm -mm, girl. Up next, I read All Systems Read by Martha Wells, and I actually read <laughs> the entirety of this series except one book in this month. So I read, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tell you the titles of all of them. I read All Systems Read, Artificial Conditioning, Rogue Protocol. Is that it? No! And I also read Exit Strategy. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. So if we count that, that is the four novellas in the 
Murderbot Diaries series. The only one I have left is the full length novel, Artificial Network, Network Effect, I don't remember. But anyway, I love this series. This series is about a sec unit, which is basically a security unit, which is a robot that has also human parts in it. And the thing is that they're kind of just programmed to protect humans that they are under contract with. This particular sec unit, at one point, instead of protecting its humans, it kind of killed all of them. So he got rebooted. I'm sorry, I, I, I tend to use he for it. I, it doesn't have a gender, but it gets rebooted and it becomes self-aware. And it has to be very careful because if people start to figure out that it's self-aware, they're gonna dismantle it and make it back into a regular sec unit and it doesn't want to go back to that and the first novella he meets a group of humans he becomes really attached to them and i think this kind of series introduces a really interesting aspect of becoming self-aware as an ai where it's like he's scared to look at humans and i, I just had never seen that because usually when we read about AI becoming self-aware, we don't get that aspect of how anxious he is. I'm sorry, how anxious it is around humans. And I like that his learning of humans comes through soap operas. <laughs> so yeah, it's a really fun, action-packed little series that really got me through most of my reading slump. So there you go. I'm just gonna give you all of that. I can't tell you about each individual novella because then I will be spoiling it for you. Just know that I gave all of them either five or four stars. Remember, I put my star rating based on enjoyment and not on literary merit because who the hell am I to be talking about literary merit? Let me tell you, I'm nobody to be talking about literary merit. Okay, so I got through that and then I read Heartstopper by Alice Osman. And I really enjoyed the first volume of Heartstopper. I actually read it on my Kindle and then I bought it in physical form because I liked it so much. It's just a fluffy, cute romance between these two boys. One of them is questioning his sexuality, the other one is openly gay. And I really appreciated how Alice Osman treated, I don't remember his name, Nick, sexuality and his questioning of his sexuality and the fact that he had never fallen in love for a boy before so he automatically considered himself straight but when he starts to fall in love with the boy he begins to question and then it turns into this whole thing of is it okay for me to be bi what is bisexuality pansexuality and i think there are plenty of sexual preferences introduced in this book there's also a trans character and there's also a what appears to be so far a cis het male character that falls in love for a trans girl and i think that that's something that we don't talk about enough i found this first novel to be really cute really fluffy really sweet one of those things that you read when you just kind of need like a pick-me-up you know it's not my typical style of reading but i enjoyed it next up i read star sight by brandon sanderson and I gave this, I hate it, I hate this, I gave it five stars and I hated the whole thing until like the last 100 pages where I was like, Brandon Sanderson, you had a plan all along and I was here doubting you. This is the continuation from Skyward. Skyward tells the story of Spencer. Spencer is part of a, a group of humans that are stuck in this planet and they have these creatures attacking them constantly, trying to destroy them, and Spencer wants to be one of the pilots that goes up and fights them, except her father did something in the past that branded her and her entire family as cowards, and she is basically not allowed to be a pilot. But Spencer being the clever girl, she is finds a way around that. And this picks up where the other book left off. Now, the, the reason I wasn't liking this book in the beginning was because I really liked the group dynamic of the first book. Like, I like the characters. I like that we build this wonderful group. And then at the very end of that book, there was something introduced where I was like, fuck that. I don't wanna, 
I don't want to tell you what it is because I'll spoil the book, but I didn't like that trope. And then so I went into this book already angry at it. <laughs> me forever to read it I was like I don't want to read this because they introduced this thing I didn't like but I thought you know this is my first Sanderson I'm gonna give it a shot and I found the audiobook and let me tell you I don't get the hype about his writing I don't know if this is because this is a YA series of his and not an adult series I don't know if his writing is like much more masterful but I'm not saying he's a bad writer what I'm saying is I just don't get the hype I really don't. I mean, he's a good writer, and I love the twist he threw in the end and how he made me love this story, but I just don't see it like, oh my god, he's so different from any other sci-fi writer that I've read, because honestly, I, I didn't feel that way. Maybe when I read the Mistborn trilogy, I will. I promise you I will. It'll get, like, I'll see it more, but... In this one, I did like how he created a whole world, but the one thing I didn't like is that he waited until the last 100 pages to show it to me, and now I'm like, yes, I really loved it, but it took me like 300 pages to get there, man. Like, maybe next time, put it like earlier so that I don't feel like I'm suffering through the book. I also, I don't know, Spencer gets removed from the original group at the beginning of this book, and I was just like not having it. But in the end, I, well, I gave it five stars. Well, okay, 4.5. I'm gonna say 4.5 because in the beginning I was kind of upset. But then I, but when I think back to this book, I think about enjoyment. So, I'm not good at this. <laughs> Next up, I read, I'm gonna call this my most disappointed, disappointing book of the month, which is very sad to me because that is Tudor, the family story by Leander the Leo. Why do I feel this book was a disappointment? Now this book, I gave it a three stars, basically because I was bored out of my mind throughout it. Because I wanted more, not so much like a textbook, which this reads a lot like a textbook. I wanted more of history. I wanted more, no, I didn't want more history. That's the thing. It, this encompasses all of the Tudor history, like from before the Tudors were in the throne, from the very first Tudor that is introduced to us in history until the end of the dynasty. And I know this book looks like a chunky, chunky monster, but it's actually only 400 and so pages long because then after what, after that, it's all, of course, the research that was put into this book. So it's not a bad book. However, I did not enjoy it. I think what I wanted was a little bit more like the emotional aspects of history rather than just historical facts. One thing I will say is that my favorite historical character, historical character? No, my favorite historical figure is Mary Tudor. And I liked how this book treated her story because I feel that she often gets the short end of the stick because I mean, she was kind of a horrible person and she was kind of like, you know, somebody that murdered a lot of people. But I like that this book shows us that history has done her wrong a little bit because a lot of the male counterparts that came before her did a lot more murdering than she did and they don't get called Bloody Mary. So I think I will read more Leander DeLille. I appreciate all of the work that went into this book, but honestly, it was really boring. And this was the book that put me in a reading slump. So that kind of sucks. I'm still keeping it though, because I think that it's a really good starting point. Like if you want to be more knowledgeable about actual historical facts about the Tudors, then this is a really, really good book to go to. So I'm keeping it for research purposes and also because I really like it. I like, I really like what it has to offer, but it wasn't what I wanted from it. Does that make sense? So it was like a me thing. It's me, not you. Next I read. <laughs> All right, listen. Next I read Dragon's Code. So this is by Gigi. <laughs> book is ridiculous. <laughs> this book is by Gigi McCaffrey and this is from the Ri Dragon Riders of Pern which is Anne McCaffrey's which is her mother's original series and I've heard that the Dragon Riders of Pern series is actually really really good but this book how do I explain this book? It's like a sci-fi mixed with dragons and there's dragon riders and there's like 
these spores like alien spores that come down and that burn everything they touch and dragons can go like the in the in between which is basically a place where time and space just kind of collide and they can go back and forth in time and um in this book i think like my mistake also was starting with this book and not starting from the beginning but in this book in this book we follow a singer who's not involved in any of the action and he's just an innocent bystander and there are scenes in this book that if they were written out and entire characters where if they were written out it would make no difference like this nothing happened in this book nothing absolutely like but the thing is i liked it i gave it three stars but i liked it because this is kind of like that comforting read where you're like i just want to shut my brain off you pick up this book it was it was strangely sweet i think it was because i think Gigi mccaffrey was trying really hard but literally this book is nonsensical at some point there's like a, a, a dragon like some dragon riders steal another dragon rider's egg and then somebody goes into the past and then they they bring back the egg but the egg has been gone for 10 days and i'm like so why didn't you just go to the past when the egg was gonna be stolen and have it not be stolen this book makes no sense i gave it three stars i'm keeping it i'm keeping it because i have like a weird cutesy attachment to this book because it's just so dumb it is it's like it's like oh you tried you tried thank you thank you for trying so after that how do you follow up that book like i don't know but after that i read dude messiah and this is the continuation of dune and i have said this a million times and i will say it again for me dune stops with the first three books Dune, Mas Dune, Dune Messiah, The Children of Dune. I read Dune Messiah and I actually really liked it. I was not expecting to like it. In fact, I was so prepared to write this book off and be like, this is some bullshit because Dune doesn't need a sequel and it really doesn't. But I liked it. It was good. It was a little bit like I know that the writing goes downhill after Dune and you can see that this book, like whereas Dune is such a pillar and it's such a classic and you guys know that it's my favorite book in the sci-fi genre or is it this one was good and i liked the way it was written i liked the political aspect because this this is a political book this is 100 percent political and i feel like a lot of things happen from the original dune to this one that is just not explained but I, I, it was it, it was good. I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it more than I thought that I was. And I can't say much about it because I'll just spoil the first one. But yeah, I really like the character of Irulan, the princess that Paul is married to. She was cool. Not sure exactly what happened to her. And also, Paul's sister is in this book. And I liked her as a character, and she has a love interest, which I was totally into. I was into it. Look, I liked it. <laughs> that's all you're getting from me i really like new messiah and I, but i'm kind of worried about children of dune because if if i can see the writing how it went down from like masterful to fine so i'm guessing children of dune is going to be mediocre then i read heartstopper volume 2 by alice osman this basically picks up where is it oh yes this picks up where the other graphic novel left off something happens at the end of the graphic novel that kind of changes a lot of things for the characters again sickly sweet it's like eating eating cotton candy this is adorable and but i do think that it was less effective and kind of a little bit more boring than the first one i liked it i just wasn't in love with it and i started to see some things that i wasn't liking where it was a little bit like pandering to the masses and i'm not talking about like having different sexualities having different identities within a book is pandering to the masses i'm not talking about that but i do feel that this was a little bit to i don't know i don't know a little bit too taking off boxes of things alice osman's feels should be in a book in order to make it relatable you know 
it feels in fact i felt the same thing with radio silence it feels also that these characters are really privileged and i don't think their privilege is ever addressed in these books so sorry i gave i still gave this one four stars it was fine it, but but i'll be honest i could have just done with the first novel this one this is fine i thought i had a good reading month and now that i'm seeing oh because because i did read all of the martha wells murderbot series uh novellas and those were really good oh and after that i picked up where is it where are you <laughs> I have a mess of books on my floor. I picked up my reread for the month, which is Good Omens by Tara Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. And I still gave this five out of five stars. I really liked it. I love the characters. I actually realized that I didn't remember a lot of the plot, but then I don't know if you saw when my husband picked this out for me to read, that when I read this the first time, I was going through a really hard mental health time. So it makes sense that I don't remember a lot of the plot because I, I I just was in a bad place, but I still enjoyed it. Gave it five out of five stars. This is funny. I really like it. And I realized that Emily from books with Emily Fox, yes. Again, she and I just don't agree on anything, but I still love her videos. And she unhauled her version of this because she didn't like it. But that's okay, Emily. We can still be friends. Next, I read... The Deep by River Solomon. Now, if you haven't seen my video on Afrofuturism, then I will link it up in the cards. Right here where my eye is. I'm going to just quickly tell you I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. This is this, this is an Afrofuturistic story about a group of mermaid people that come from black women that were thrown overboard when being brought to America that were pregnant. And these mermaid people are the result of that. And every generation there's a historian and a historian basically has to go through a whole process where she remembers all of the history of her people and this is a very painful process that might actually kill her so what she ends up doing is she runs away but the book discusses what happens when you allow yourself and others around you to forget where you come from and your history as a people and it's amazing it's a beautiful sapphic romance also in this book and i just really really loved it again if you want to know more please uh go watch my video on afrofuturism because i talk about it at length there then i read a book that kind of infuriated me a little bit and that is heartstopper volume 3 by alice Osman. remember how the other one i was like um uh, i was kind of over it this one introduces something that again feels like it's there like there was no warning for it before there was nothing to prepare me for the fact that this has mention of self-harm and oh i think the other one does too self-harm and eating disorders as somebody who has gone through eating disorders i would have liked a heads up about that and it doesn't it doesn't have that it doesn't have that and also i don't like how it was treated in the book i don't know how it's going to end up being treated but i was actually so uncomfortable with the idea that as long as somebody loves you you can overcome an eating disorder that i actually decided to unhaul this series that's how uncomfortable i was with it it was really horrible to me for me to read and i feel that any young person who these books are aimed at that reads that might be led to believe that you can just overcome an eating disorder if you have a boyfriend and people that love you and if you've been through something like that or any addictive tendency or any addiction which i have that really bothered me like it bothered me to my core i was very upset with the way it was treated it is left open in the end to like the idea that maybe the, he's like the character is not cured and maybe that there's more to it but i just didn't like it it made me very uncomfortable and it makes me very uncomfortable to think that there are young people out there that are reading that that read this and they think 
maybe if they had someone that loved them maybe if they had a boyfriend girlfriend partner that they could also overcome something as big as an eating disorder and that's not like that i have an amazing amazing husband that adores me that thinks i am the most beautiful woman in the universe he he tells me constantly that i am the most beautiful woman he's ever seen and i still struggle even after all these years it's been 17 years of struggle and for for this book to kind of like gloss over it like that or just kind of introduce it in the way that it did and it felt almost like again i i, I I don't know if this is like this. I'm sorry if Alice Osman has gone through eating disorders and or or but it didn't feel like it was genuine. It felt like a wiki article was read about this and then she just put it in there. Like, oh, this is about control. Yeah, you can't control things. So and and it I didn't like it. <laughs> so I'm actually deciding to unhaul this series because it made me that uncomfortable. And I'm sorry that this got really serious all of a sudden. So we're just gonna put this off to the side and we're just not gonna, mm -mm, we're not gonna. And it's sad. It's sad because I, I thought originally the series was gonna be really nice, a really nice look into that kind of ideal first romance sort of thing. And for it to take that turn really upset me, you know. And I know that these are things that teenagers go through. Again, I went through it myself, but I just, I, I didn't like the treatment of it. That's it. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I didn't like the treatment of it. I gave it three stars. I think that was me being gracious. But let's move on. The next book that I picked up was Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiefvater. If you saw my book haul, you saw that I was thinking about returning this book because I hate the Raven King so much that I like detest the series but thankfully the characters that I don't like are not in this book and the characters that I do like are except one but I actually really like this book I really like Maggie Steve Otter's writing I like how like I I'm, I'm pretty much not sure what happened I know that oh my god how do I even begin to explain this, this is like explaining a Jeff Vandermeer book but be ready for that one but basically this is about the Lynch brothers, which is Ronan, what, what is the other one's name? Ronan, Declan, and I forget the third one, but basically they, uh, Ronan's a dreamer, his father was a dreamer, which means he can create things in dreams and bring them to life. Ronan and Declan's and the other one's father basically created something and now they have to get it at the fairy market and it's weird and there is another dreamer in here who has been traumatized by a parent's death and what she can create is actually versions of herself. So basically there's copies of copies of her and there can only be 13 of these copies and when she gets to number 13 basically the, I, I believe that they're all gonna die. And this is Ronan helping this woman get through it while also dealing with the fact that he's in a relationship with someone that has basically left him behind. His boyfriend in this has basically gotten a new life. He graduated, he's going to a good school, and Ronan is just kind of there. And, and I think that it's really interesting how you see this fear of Ronan of losing the man that he loves because he's just not good enough for him. So yeah, I actually really enjoyed it and I'm keeping it and I'm really glad. Look at that cover. It's so cool. I gave this how much did I give it? I gave it four out of five stars. Ugh. Guys, I'm already tired. All right, what did I read next? Okay, next I read, <laughs> I read a bunch of novellas. Next I read, This World is Full of Monsters by Jeff Vandermeer. <laughs> oh, Jeff Vandermeer. I, 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 mm, Jeff Vandermeer, how do I explain your work? Basically, this <laughs> story is about an alien creature that comes to this writer and basically the creature is like a flower that blooms and that basically becomes the other person and like his thoughts, his feelings become it and it's kind of like an alien invasion of these storytelling flowers and I dig that shit. 
I, Jeff Vandermeer writes for me. I'm convinced that, like I said, I, I'm his target audience. I really am. If you like really weird shit that leaves you thinking like, what the fuck did I just read? Then you're gonna like Jeff Vandermeer. So I liked it. I didn't love it, but I liked it. So I gave it 3.5 stars. I was confused most of the time, but I feel that I was supposed to be confused most of the time. Also, the sun is going down, so let's get going. Next up, I read This Is How You Lose The Time War by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. I'm pretty sure you've heard about this. This is basically the story of two dueling nut spies agents for different timelines of the future and basically what they have to do is sabotage each other so that their timeline is the timeline that prevails above all at the end and it's weird as fuck and it's a sapphic romance and these two agents begin to fall in love by writing letters to each other and honestly it's beautiful and i loved it and i gave it five out of five stars i it's weird it's again i love weird shit and this is my kind of shit. Now, if you want like straight up, like straightforward storytelling where you know you have a linear timeline or at least a timeline that makes any kind of sense, this is not the book for you. But if you like something kind of weird where you're not sure what's happening, but the emotional aspects of the character are more important than maybe the action, this book is for you and this book is definitely for me and I loved it. I, I don't know what else to say about it because it's a, a short novella. I love the characters. I love how they figure out how to communicate with each other. I love the beautiful way that they describe each other. I love the nicknames that they give each other because one is blue and one is red and they start talking about how much they've never seen each other's color in the world until they begin to fall in love with each other. It's such a beautiful novella. I just, please read it. Do yourself a favor and read it. <sighs> okay, we're at the very end. Next, I read Ursula K. Le Guin's The Word for World is Forest and chef's kiss to this book. Oh my God, I love this book. Five out of five stars. This book is about, again, humans colonizing a other planets and in this planet there is basically this group of they call them humans because basically the definition of human here is any sentient creature but these creatures which are called the creatures which is kind of like a bad term but that's how I distinguished them are smaller they're green fur they they're, they look like they look like humans but they're not precisely humans they're similar to humans and they are a peaceful people until humans attack then everything changed when the fire nation attacked basically and one day they decide to fight back and this book deals with the aftermath of these creatures fighting back and i just can't explain to you how beautiful this book is and and how this book talks about language in a way that I understand language because as you guys know, I speak a bunch of languages. And for me, it's so important to discuss what words mean what in certain language. One of the first thing I tell my students when we begin classes is, I know you've been told all your life the verb to be equals the verb ser o estar in Spanish. I'm sorry I can't translate that because I tell them, and you have been lied to, because the concept of being in English is completely different from the concept of being in Spanish. That's why in Spanish we say, I have cold, when in English we say, I am cold. So that alone, and the fact that the word for world is forest in these people's language is so important because for them the forest is not just a place it's world and i don't i don't even know if you understand like as somebody that loves languages and that thinks that language and culture like that knowing a language is the way to know a culture like i don't know if you understand how much that meant to me like when i read that i was like i get it i get it i was actually talking to somebody about how i how i learn languages because i i i, I have a an ease to learn languages and it's because i don't 
translate i never translate in my mind like i'm not thinking of things in english and then translating them to spanish or i'm not thinking in in in, in english translating to french i'm not thinking in spanish trying to translating to japanese i'm not doing that what i learned is that things are concepts and these concepts have different names or different pronunciations i call them different pronunciations in different languages and what I need to learn is the pronunciation of the concept in a language. And that way, that's why I can easily understand grammar of different languages because I don't see words, I see concepts. This turned into a really strange thing about how I teach languages and how I teach the idea of languages to people. But basically, this book talks about that. This book talks about do we ever really win wars or do we just survive them and how war and violence changes you forever and i oh, i love this book so much i gave it five out of five stars it's really really something else i i recommend everybody pick up this book it's incredible and i thank you connor from my neighbor so yeah so thank you connor from connor's Tompano? Sorry, I always say your name wrong, but I'll link your channel up in the cards and down below. He was the one that recommended this book to me, and I'm so glad he did. Now, as far as Ursula K. Le Guin's writing style, I, I'm not sure I'm going to pick up much more from her, but I might. I might. I'm, I'm keeping an open mind. I'm keeping an open mind. Alright, oh, we're at it. We're at the end, okay? Sorry I've kept you here so long. But the last book I read in May was Autonomous by Annalie Newitz. This book I have a whole conversation about. I'll link it again up in the cards. But basically this book is about a reverse engineering drug pirate that reverses engineers a drug that helps people concentrate. But what she doesn't know is that the company that creates the drug didn't make public the fact that this drug is highly addictive and now she kind of has the ability to expose big pharma for basically destroying people's lives and the plot kind of gets muddled and lost in a lot of sex <laughs> and i'm not saying that the book has smut in it because they kind of do the fade to black scene or like wakes up naked next to someone so you know they've had sex basically but uh, yeah, uh, I gave this book 3.5 stars, 3 stars. It was okay, but it does have an interesting discussion about robots, machines, and the concept of gender that we apply to these things that wouldn't necessarily have a concept of gender unless it's created by humans. And the idea that, where is gender? Is it in the brain? Is it in the genitals? Where is it? This book discusses that in a way that I think is really interesting. So again, I will link my talk about that up in the cards. And yeah. Oh, we're still here. Why are we still here? Because I DNF'd a book. So let's talk about it. A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I DNF this book because DNFing is caring and I hated this book from the word go. Now let's talk about something. <laughs> I'm sorry if this is your favorite book, but you know, you came here for my opinion. This is my opinion. And I'm not saying this book was badly written, but what I am saying is that I have never seen such a cliche character in my life. Like if you ever tabletop roleplay, you understand that little that character which is like the last of his race and he was raised by royalty but he doesn't feel like he's royal he feels like he's a rebel and he feels wrong and he doesn't remember his past and there is another one like him that might be the bad guy also this book falls into that whole thing with YA that I really really hate which is the cool girl which translates in YA or a lot of YA at least YA fantasy to a girl that is not stereotypically feminine and not only is she not stereotypically feminine but she denounces other girls that are stereotypically feminine and I don't need that shit in my life so I DNF that bullshit 
And also, just so we're clear, I love Vicious by B.E. Schwab, so that was really sad for me. That was a sad moment when I DNF that book. Also, the fact that I spent my hard earned cash on buying that book. Oh, it just makes me remember why I should probably stop buying books so that I can read them right away so that they're not sitting on my shelf for such a long time and then I just end up not liking them. <sighs> and that's it. Those are the 21 books I wanted to talk to you about. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys if you sat through that. Seriously, if you sat through that, Put down, like, say, I love A Darker Shade of Magic in the comments if you made it through the whole video. So that I know that you made it through the whole video just for fun. And, well, thank you guys for watching, really. I... I, 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 am he I was hesitating to go back to like doing wrap-ups and doing TBRs and things like that with everything happening in the world but just know that I do realize that this pile of books is really white. It is. It, it is. And, and uh, I see that and I see my color blindness when it comes to reading and I'm trying to do better. Okay, uh, that's what I want to say on that. And other than that, I just, I just want you to know that I haven't forgotten everything that's happening in the world and it's not like I ticked it off my checklist and it's like, okay, I'm now back to regular content. No, I'm still, I'm still learning, I'm still trying and if you see my TBR for next month, you see that I have made the effort to educate myself more, to read more black authors and yeah. But this is an ongoing process. This is like learning. It's not just something that you take off and you're done with. So yeah, these are the books that I read in May and I hope that you like my video. <laughs> anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Just as a friendly reminder, I post videos every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays and sometimes I pepper in videos throughout the week if I'm feeling a little bit extra and throughout the weekend if I'm feeling even more extra, which I might this week because I'm feeling a lot better mental health wise, uh, not because of everything happening in the world, but because I've been doing a lot of uh, self-care that includes uh, going to the doctor when I don't feel well. So pat on the back to me. Yeah, I guess without further ado, I bid you adieu and I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. And thank you so much for watching. All right? Bye, guys. God, that was long. <laughs>